Ah, Pythagoras' theorem. The first known proof comes from 300 BC, and since then it has been proved in many, many different ways. You can find a ton of them on YouTube, but there's one proof that I haven't seen. It's a very odd proof, and, well, it's my favourite. It's so especially strange because it's based on an idea stolen from physics. Dimensional analysis is the principle that the units on the left-hand side of an equation must be the same as the units on the right-hand side of an equation. Let's take E equals mc squared. The unit of mass is the kilogram, and the unit of speed is meters per second, and so the unit of energy must be kilogram meter squared per second squared, and that's just what we call a joule. Dimensional analysis is a way of checking our physics equations are consistent. So what's it got to do with Pythagoras' theorem? Well, let's start, as always, by drawing a triangle. We only need to know two things to create a right angle triangle the length of the hypotenuse, and the angle it makes with one of the shorter sides. Now if you want to find the area of the triangle we've just drawn, it's got to be some combination of those two variables. We don't know exactly how they're combined, so the best we can do is say that the area is some function of the angle and the length. Dimensional analysis is what gives us a way to simplify this equation. The area of the triangle has units of meters squared, The hypotenuse is measured in metres, and the angle, well, it isn't a length, or a mass, or a time, so we say it has no units. And we want the right-hand side of the equation to be in metres squared, just like the left-hand side of the equation. But the only way that's going to happen is if we square c, the length of the hypotenuse. So our function has to look like c squared times f of theta. We just need one more trick to complete this proof, and that is this line. The area of our original triangle is just the sum of the areas of the two smaller triangles. But these are both right angled triangles, and we've just found a formula for the area of a right angled triangle. a1 is equal to the length of the hypotenuse squared times f of theta, that's a squared times f of theta, and if you agree with me that this angle here is also theta, then a2 is equal to b squared times f of theta. And after substituting in the equation for the area of the largest triangle, you should be able to see what to do next. Right, after dividing by the common factor of f of theta, we arrive at Pythagoras' theorem. And one of the key steps in this proof was this funny reasoning we did with the units of the different quantities we're working with. We started off with a function of theta and c, which could be any kind of crazy combination of those two variables, but by reasoning in this way we were able to take the length of the hypotenuse outside the function, and drastically simplify the formula that we had. And this can be used, and is used, in many different areas of physics, to come up with reasonable physical equations for a phenomena that we might not quite understand yet. I hope you enjoyed this weird and wonderful proof of Pythagoras' theorem. But if you're still not convinced, and you know trigonometry, try and work out the explicit form of this function, f of theta, and check that what I've done is correct. Well, except in one particular case. Thank you for watching the video, if you enjoyed it please like and subscribe.